what we're going to do right now uh, is get to one of these major trials that we really haven't had a chance to cover just yet here on Live Now. Live Now, look there uh, over Dedham, Massachusetts. That's where we're going for our next story. Uh, it is the high profile Karen Reed murder case. So remember, she is the woman accused of killing her boyfriend, who was a Boston police officer. Uh, we have some video there. Let's take that. So this is what we know. The story is so tragic, uh, but here is where it gets so interesting. Reed's defense argues that she's being framed and that her boyfriend was beaten inside the home of a retired Boston police officer. So uh, we're going to break all of this down about what we know about the case uh, with our friend, legal analyst uh, Nicole DeBoard, uh, who joins us with more. Uh, Nicole, thanks for being with us. I know you've been kind of monitoring this as well. The trial just kicked off this week. I believe we're still in jury selection. I want to ask, though, the trial seems very messy. A lot of he said, she said, so to speak, and a lot of speculation online. Uh, how difficult will it be to find an impartial jury uh, in this part of Massachusetts uh, when these communities are so close-knit, this story is so high profile and so sad? It, it's incredibly sad, and it has already proven to be quite difficult for them to find jurors who either don't know about the case because almost everyone in the community that or a significant number of people that they've called to potentially be jurors in this case uh, have responded to questions by the court that they have heard about the case. And of that group, uh, many of them have responded that they had an opinion about the case. Um, and even uh, that opinion went so far as to be a bias. So it is proving to be difficult already. Uh, it has been an, a trial or a case, if you will, before the trial even began with many volatile issues and opinions which were discussed in the public eye. Yeah, and let's go over some of the nuts and bolts of the case here, uh, because I think this is the first time any of our viewers are coming to this trial. Uh, so she's pleaded not guilty to several charges, including second degree murder. The state is using her cracked right tail light as evidence. So is that enough, do you think, or do you expect other evidence to be presented? And how does that factor into the story overall? Well, I think it factors into the story because they're using this as the as the piece of evidence, if you will, that connects her somehow to this idea that she, um, in in some drunken state after leaving a bar, backed up over her husband and left him to die in the cold. That is essentially what the prosecution is saying. While on the other hand, the defense team is saying this is absolutely not true and that there was a cracked tail light uh, either by somebody else or from some other thing that happened um, and that this was completely a setup done after her husband was beaten badly in the home of another police officer who then had the means and ability to cover up the crime. Wow. So uh, just to also kind of keep setting the, the scene here and the stage, this happened in early 2022. Uh, Reed alleges that her boyfriend, O'Keefe, his, his name was beaten up by another retired Boston police officer. She even makes that claim during her arrest while she is getting arrested. Uh, and it's heard on body camera footage as well. So since she is the only one charged in this, does the other officer she's accusing even have to appear, even have to defend himself? Uh, obviously, you know, he's a big factor in this because she has lofted this accusation against that officer, that retired officer. Um, what is his role going to be in all this, if any? It's possible and likely, in fact, that he will be a witness in this case, uh, potentially called by the prosecution, where the prosecution will make an effort to show uh, that this person had nothing to do with the, a beating or ultimately the death of her husband. On the other hand, I think we can expect some grilling cross-examination by the defense team if, in fact, the prosecution does call one of the individuals that they've already said their theory was uh, caused the, the injuries to the decedent in this case, to Miss Reed's husband. So that retired police officer, his name, Albert, his attorney says his client has nothing to hide and is not subject of a federal investigation. FBI analysis of the phone, though, of his sister-in-law shows a web search. In that web search, how long to die in the cold? 
hours before they called 911 to report O'Keefe's body. Um, so that was made, that, that Google search, that web search, hours before 911 is called. Is that enough? Or is that just circumstantial uh, to cast doubt on Albert's alibi, so to speak? I mean, some would say, or some would, you know, liken this. Is that a smoking gun? I mean, that's quite obvious. It's 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 certainly a tangle of evidence in this case. Keep in mind, the only person on trial in this matter is the defendant, Miss Reed, and she is the person who is having to defend herself really through whatever happens in court. Now, she doesn't have to testify, and her lawyers don't have to have to ask a single question. But her team will be doing all they can to show that there is another cause of death for Miss Reed's husband. And even though this other witness doesn't have to defend himself because he's not on trial, you can expect that he will be cross-examined thoroughly about exactly what went on in the evening and the hours up to finding the body of Miss Reed's husband. I mean, Nicole, it does seem like the defense really has their work cut out for them because there's so many claims at play that they will have to do their best to try to prove, uh, you know, her innocence in all of this. Of course, she's presumed innocent beyond a reasonable doubt here, but won't the prosecution have to establish a motive into why she wanted her partner dead? Yes, although this is an, a manslaughter allegation, which is essentially without the same type of intent that's required for a murder, or you know, even if they decide that she's responsible for a lesser amount of culpability, you know, that you still have this tangle of theories that we can expect the defense the, uh, team to present. Um, you know, in, in one of the decisions the judge has already had to make is whether or if to uh, how much to limit this theory that there is a third party culprit. In other words, this other person who's responsible for the death instead. So, you know, to that point, though, uh, do you think she's going to be the only one charged in this or is the window of opportunity still open that they may charge more people in connection to this? I mean, you know, investigators, you know, I mean, they never tell the public when the case closed, so to speak. They usually say the investigation is ongoing. Do you think the likelihood will present itself that more people could be charged in this. And if that's the case, if that happens, how is Karen Reed's case different? You know, it's possible theoretically that somebody else could be charged, although this case has, has you know, now been pending for a significant amount of time. You've had federal and state agencies do their part in ultimately bringing this evidence uh, to make it available ultimately for jury to hear, it seems unlikely that there will be others charged. I mean, can we say for certain that no one will be charged? Uh, no, uh, that's that's not something we can know for sure. But at this juncture, it appears, it appears that the prosecution really is interested in Ms. Reed and only Ms. Reed uh, for criminal responsibility. You know, I don't know if you have any experience uh, with, you know, a defense and their client claiming that they have been framed for a crime that they have been charged with. Um, how do those claims usually hold up in court? You know, is a jury, can a judge be amenable to those claims based on the facts presented? Uh, is it taken seriously is what I'm trying to say. You know, it's it's a difficult defense in many circumstances, but this is a unique case because the decedent uh, is a former police officer and the individuals that Ms. Reed is saying framed her are also police officers who were connected to them in a relationship, uh, you know, a friendship, uh, or as colleagues in such a way that you might not normally see in many cases, right? So where you have someone setting up a framing, these potential, fr to p potential framers have the know-how is what the defense team is going to be saying. All right, uh, Nicole DeBoard, thanks so much. Uh, and it seems like that's why this is so high profile, so public, because many in the community there must feel like it could happen to anyone. That seems to be kind of the prevailing sentiment, right? It sure does. And yeah. it seems like Ms. Reed has said from the beginning that she absolutely wasn't responsible and she pointed to some other individuals who might be. All right, uh, Nicole DeBoard, as always, uh, can't thank you enough for your insight. Uh, into these high-profile cases and trials, and we'll check in soon. Thanks for having me.